Hello, I'm Tanja K. Johnson. I'm Sylvester Barsi. I'm L.M. Bennett. And I'm Alex Christian. And we are Voices of Color. And today we wanted to talk to you about a topic that's kind of been on our minds and we wanted to bounce it around. Um, so how do you guys, as writers of color, write other characters that are of color? I feel like, personally for me, that I take the same approach that I would want someone outside of my race to take. When I'm writing an Asian character thing, I want to be specific of what culture they're from. I don't want to fixate on their skin color or throw in any stereotypes. I, I try and avoid that. They're people and they just happen to be from a different race. I don't see why we have to write them any different. Are you saying uh, you, you make sure that if they're Vietnamese versus Chinese, if there are going to be any cultural differences, you, you suss those out? Yeah, I try. Uh, typically, the characters I write are all from the same area. I haven't done a story that takes place in like Los Angeles and somebody's moved there from Cleveland. Even though they are different races, they are of the same culture. So I haven't really run into a problem with making them different or making them speak different. But it's a lot of it has to do with the genre that I write in. When I move into urban fantasy more heavily, I might run into more of that. But so far, it's not come up. I basically make sure I do a lot of research. I want to get the cultures right if it's not a culture that I'm making up completely. And even if I am creating the culture from scratch, I'm still going to do some research and invest the time and make sure that I'm looking up facts and getting things right. Because I don't want to go into my writing with the intention to offend anyone or their culture or their beliefs or their respects. So I'm going to take that time and dedicate it to research so I can make my writing original, my world original, my characters to be original. Does anybody base their characters on people they know? Uh, yeah. I, I killed my boss off. He got eaten by zombies. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go. Usually a, a mishmash of, of people that I know. Sometimes I take uh, the best and the, the worst features and kind of average those out and mash them all together. One of my best friends, Lowry, is Korean and German, but he grew up in Maryland. <laughs> you know, he's just as... American as I am. It's, it's, a, it's a very different thing. So do you guys use sensitivity readers when you write characters that are not of your own race? I do if I'm writing a drama. So I, I, I have this story where it's a couple and one of the people in the group gets sick and the boyfriend has to take care of the girlfriend even though she was unfaithful. But they are from Chicago and there's a bunch of different races in their friend group. But all of these people, because of how they culturally see relationships, have very different takes on how these two should handle it. I definitely, first off, I get women to read it. Uh, I definitely, you know, like, would you consider this offensive? Does this bother you? Is this the kind of thing your friends joke about? And if your friends joke about it, would it be okay if somebody outside of your friend group or outside of your race joked about it? I, I definitely try to get those opinions. I may or may not change it depending on what I'm trying to do, but I definitely don't want to accidentally offend someone. Have you guys ever been sensitivity readers? I have, and the person that I read for did not like my feedback, and uh -huh. they just completely ignored it and continued ahead with their story the way that it was. The content was very offensive, and it wasn't even to my race group. And I picked up on the <laughs> and I was like, wow, I don't think this is something that people are going to appreciate, especially coming into 2019. We're more open minded. We're more we're more willing to accept that some of the things that we have said in the past are not any longer acceptable. Yeah. The person just said, you know, forget it. You're like one of the only people, which meant somebody else said it that said this. And I'm just going to continue the story. I want to. I don't want to be politically correct. It's my story. I'm going to do it the way I want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I don't know. That's the philosophy. That's that, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Quentin Tarantino does that same thing, doesn't he? Like everybody talks to talk about him dropping the N word in all his movies. And he's just like, I'm going to write my movies the way I want to write my movies. These characters speak this way. That's kind of the world that he creates. 
this is a guy who hangs out with the Wu-Tang Clan. He's on a whole nother weirdness mm-hmm. level. In uh, Black Panther, the character Mbatu is actually known as Man-Ape mm-hmm. in the comics. And that did not test well at all. I bet it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> they went back and reshot a whole lot of movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. Wait, but... so that was originally what they called him in the film? They, uh, they'll they shoot the scenes that they want for the trailer and try to get the studio to finance it. But yeah, they were going to stay true to the original comic book and call him uh, Man-Ape and no. Yeah, I don't think I could uh, like sat through the whole movie while they're just calling him Man-Ape. Man-Ape came down. No, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> Yeah, it's like don't I mean, it's one thing reading a comic book, but then some things from comic books don't really translate to movies very well. Yeah, that would have uh, been a very high discomfort level. Yeah. Think, on my end. Yeah. Uh, I was a sensitivity reader once, and I said, have, "Have you realized that all of the white characters in this story are married, and none of the black people know one or both of their parents? Did you even consciously do that?" It's like, no, no, I didn't consciously do it, but, you know, that's that's realistic. <laughs> oh. Oh. You're going to run into a problem when you release. I was a sensitivity reader. It was for a short story. Mm-hmm. And I didn't find anything problematic about it. The black maid turns into a zombie. There's nothing, like, racial about it. Mm-hmm. It's just how he came to me was kind of funny. It was just like, hey, uh, I got this story. Can you read this for me? And I was just like. I don't really have time to read because, you know, I got to write my own things. And he's like, it's for the contest and it's got some black character. And then it just dwindled down to you're the only black person in the group. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, so do you mind? I was just like, yeah, no, no, that's fine. But it wasn't problematic. And he's a great writer. So it, was, it, it turned out OK. I didn't have any issue. I did have a sensitivity reader for one of my short stories, Into Voids and Ashes. And my main character is a woman with a disability, or I don't consider her disabled in any way, but she is missing some limbs. And because of that, I had to be really conscious of the way that she was referring to herself, the thoughts that she had. I didn't want her to think of herself as a broken person. So sensitivity readers are really important. Anybody writing something that they're not sure about, you should enlist one. They're very helpful, and they usually give really good advice. So when you guys are writing non-POC characters, do you take the same approach? Do you have that same level of being careful about who you're writing and respecting the culture? Is it something that you're just already so familiar with by media and all the books that you've, in, that you've taken in and read over the years that you don't really need to invest that much time in? So how do you approach it? I I do, I guess maybe maybe I'm not thinking about it as much, but I do feel like being that I was surrounded by so much media and books and movies without people of color that I kind of feel like I know how they want to be represented or something or how they would like to view themselves. The only time I would like dive into something like that is like there's certain things like when I write about like the mob or the mafioso, I research things like that and I'll go deep into things like that. But I mean, mostly that's just because I like things like that. I like watching documentaries about serial killers and mobsters. So that's just me. Um, I think of, of and um, this is going to sound weird. It's one of my favorite movies, but like I've recognized that it's problematic in a way. Um, the the movie Lost in Translation, mm-hmm. um, with uh, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson, and when I think of um how to be sensitive to to other cultures, like I think do the opposite of what I saw in that film, which is <laughs> um, <laughs> by by making the customs of the culture that you are representing strange or bizarre in any way. Like I I think of literally doing the opposite of that and i don't i don't know how other other an, another way to explain it but to to try to do the opposite of that because because it is so offensive and in a way and, and it kind of takes away from the story 
I have run into so few circumstances where, uh, uh, unless the purpose of the character is an exploration of the culture, uh, the culture is the same. If I write about a group of friends from New York, right, and they're all from Queens, they might be different races, but when they're together, they're just them. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't now. Maybe if one, you know, if the black kid goes to dinner at the Italian kid's house, then the culture comes into it. But typically, it doesn't come up that much. I'm actually hard pressed to find a scenario in in which that is the case. Typically. The character's culture, unless that is the point, just melts into the background. I can understand that. You know, I feel like when I hear something like that, I feel like I look back into my childhood. And although we were a pretty diverse group of friends, I feel like our uh, our cultures did come into play every now and then. Whenever Jonathan got grounded. Grounded. He got grounded in, in a language I could not understand, and his mom was yelling real high. So, and my mama wouldn't let me go across the street. She said, "You don't need to be at that window." All those hoodlums. I was like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends' name was Kim, and he would talk about uh, like getting in trouble. Like when he had to get home, he had to get home. It was a, you know, it was this serious deal because nothing that he did was a reflection of him. Nothing that he did was solely his life. Everything Mm -hmm. he did was a reflection on the family and the family name. Yeah. So we absolutely, if he had to be, you know, someplace by six so that he could be home for dinner, you know, we respected that and we got him where he needed to be. But, uh, you know, we bonded over comic books. So (laughs) that was the culture. No, I I totally understand. Like, a lot of me and a lot of my friends bonded over wrestling and comic books and things like that. That's where we all gathered was the comic book store. So I totally get that. So how do you feel about people being told that they can't write certain characters that are outside of their race group, gender, because they're going to most likely get them wrong? Do you agree with that practice? I think it's I not only stupid, but it's selfish and it's destructive. Um, the whole concept of, uh, there are three things that you don't talk about, right? Like money, religion, and politics is led to people not being able to even know how to talk about these things. You know what I mean? Cause it was taboo. You just don't do it to tell a writer that this subject is off limits to you is inane and it's incredibly entitled tread carefully, do your research, you know, advice like that. I completely can co-sign on. Look, you are from Thailand. You can't write about the hood. I think it's madness. So recently there's a YA author and she pulled her book series because of some issues with writing characters within a culture that was supposedly not her own. And some of the themes had to do with slavery and racism in her fantasy in her fantasy stories. So when people encroach on others' culture, is, is there something that you do to be very careful that, that you're not offending anyone, that you're getting it right? That, or is there nothing that you can do? Even if you try your best, there's still someone that's going to be offended. If there's, there's always going to be someone that's going to hate what you're doing. Not everyone's going to love what you're doing. Especially in this day and age, people get offended by like this... Sometimes I feel like it's small things that people get offended by. And then, you know, but that's just how society is now. Something that I think isn't a big deal can be a massive deal to somebody else. So no matter what you write, someone's going to get sparked by something. Like I wrote my book and they thought it was what? POC propaganda. Just because my character was black. We have run out of time. I wish we can keep this conversation going, but that's all we have. This has been Voices of Color. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.